Thank you, Brother Matthew. This is a good thought, isn't it? Yes. You are complete in Him. Now, the exhortation, as, as our Brother Matthew was speaking there, you, you can't read this text and, and, well, I guess you could if you ignored the text, but you can't read the text and have any understanding of the text and walk away saying, uh, there's, there's, there's just not any way. Once you come into Christ, you're ne you, you don't never have to worry about being spoiled. I mean, <laughs> it kind of like tend, it, like, and it lends itself for the, the reason why he said beware is because there's something that we need to beware of. There's something, I mean, we're not home yet, right? I mean, we, we've made a confession of faith. We've been baptized. God put us into Christ. We're on the road to glory. And, um, but there's not any possible any way. We know, as we all know, there's not any way we could possibly fall away from that stance. That you wouldn't get that from this verse is my point. See, the exhortation is, is to give all diligence and make your calling and election sure. Now, you're not the one that called. You didn't call yourself. God called you, but he's going to call you. He's going to ask you to do something. You're going to have to make it sure. Not sure to God. God knows. He called you. You're making it sure to you. Amen. See, there's, there's a reason why he says beware. Because we have enemies out there that if they had their way... You wouldn't make your calling and election sure. You would just say, sit back and say, well, God, if you want to save me, just save me. And that may sound kind of vile, but there's people that live that way. They live like they could really care less, and yet if you ask them if they're going to heaven, oh, of course I am. I, back there sometime, I scratched my nose during the service. And that sounds foolish, but that's, that's all you got to do in some place just raise your hand. All right, I see that one. You're in. You're in. There was a time when Lucifer really was in heaven. He really was there. He's not there anymore. What happened? See, there was something that happened. To the, to the end of that, whatever, you know, he, had, he was dispelled. There was a time when Adam and Eve really were in the garden of God. They were in charge there. There came a time when they had to leave. Something happened. And what the apostle's telling us is that you've got to be on your guard or something's going to pull you, something's going to pull you out of the kingdom. Now, you say, well, as long as we're walking in the spirit, see this, but that is the, that, that's the key, isn't it? He says, this I say, then walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So well, what's the exhortation there? To, then walk in the spirit then. Don't be distracted. Don't allow the things on the outside to become more appealing to you than the things on the inside. Now, Christ has given unto us. When you come into Christ, what does he do? He, God puts you in the Christ. He gives you a, you become a new creation, right? All the old things are passed away. All things have become new. And now we can receive this exhortation. Beware, lest any man spoil you. People out there, they would use their reasonings, their ability to be able to reason, to try to... That's why we don't cast pearls before the swine. Because, see, they can turn and rend you. They can make the thing less precious to you through their vain philosophies. I've talked to some people about the flood, and, and they've tried to turn my mind to think that it wasn't so... It wasn't, wasn't that bad. One man told me, it wasn't a, a flood that covered the whole earth. It was just a, you know, just a localized flood. I told myself, well, that's even more amazing because all the animals died from a local flood. And then, see, these things aren't thought out well. And if you could see them right. But see, this is some men. They come with vain words. They come with puffed up words. And they try to turn your mind away from the simplicity that's in Christ. Yeah. The fact is, is that Jesus died so you could be delivered from the wrath to come. Amen. Now see, we want to hold on to that. Because if we don't hold on to it, it'll get away from it. In other words, faith has to be nourished. It has, we, what you got today is good. As long as what you got really was good. But I mean, it, if you're really walking in the Spirit, if you're really trusting in Christ, that's good for right now. But see, tomorrow, 
I mean, just like the manna. You couldn't gather stuff for tomorrow. It would get all wormy and it would be bad. Every day we had to gather up fresh manna. We need some fresh manna. Now, today we got some fresh manna. All the way from the time Brother Aaron stood up here, Sister Barb, we, we got from fresh manna. Sister June gave us a great calling too. We got some fresh manna today. But see, that's going to... It's going to keep us if we give attention to it, take heed to the things which you've heard, and don't let anything slip. Anything God's given you, don't let it go. That's my exhortation to you. Don't, don't Take the things that you've received from God today and do something with them. See, that's how they don't let them slip. You do something with them. You incorporate them into in the way you think and the way you live, and, and then they don't, they don't slip away. Remember, Jesus told the apostles, anytime anyone hears the word of God and they don't understand it, immediately the wicked one's there. The enemy's there. What does he want to do? He wants to steal that thing away. Well, my exhortation is don't let that happen. Which tells you that you are a worker together with God. You, you can actually labor and God will bless it to where you don't lose it. So um, I, I, I like this. I like this thought that we're complete or mature. See, we... In Christ, we, there is nobody that's in Christ ultimately that's going to suffer loss. See, he, he's the place of safety. Christ is, the, is like the ark. He's the place of safety. And when this world passes away with a great noise and the elements are melting, everyone who has stayed in Christ, he stayed where God put you, they're, they're going to be experiencing a great salvation on that day. I mean, now... We're saved, but see, I don't know that we really know the full extent of what we've been saved from until we stand on that sea of glass and we see everything passing away. You know, you're not passing away. I see, you'll be singing the great salvation to God that day. Anyway, I, I, I'm thankful that the apostle thought it profitable to give us this exhortation. Beware. Yeah. There's um. We've been given a great, a great thing in salvation, and um, we don't want to let it get away from us. Are there any comments from the brother today, Brother Jason?